Lesson 6.7, Compare Fractions. We can compare fractions by writing equivalent fractions using a common denominator. Then the fraction with the greater numerator will have the greater value. We can also write equivalent fractions using a common numerator. Then the fraction with the lower denominator will have the greater value. To make common denominators, we make a list of the multiples of the given denominators. We choose the lowest common multiple for our common denominator. We learned how to do this in video 6.4, which is linked in the description. We have 2 thirds and 1 sixth. We write the multiples of 3 because that's the denominator and the multiples of 6 because that's the denominator. And we can see they can meet at 6, so 6 will be our common denominator. Well, 1 6 already has a 6 for a denominator. So because 1 6 already has 6 for a denominator, we leave it as it is. We just need to change this fraction to have a 6 for a denominator. We ask ourselves 3 times some number is equal to 6. That would be 3 times 2. We need to multiply the numerator by the same number. So we have 2 times 4. We would have 4 for our numerator. Now we can compare 4 6 and 1 6. 4 6 is greater than 1 6. We know that 2 thirds is greater than 1 6. We can use fraction strips or a model to compare the fractions once we have found their common denominator. We have 1 whole and we're comparing 4 6 and 1 6. Here are four one-sixth parts, so that's four-sixths, and here's just one one-sixth part, so that's one-sixth. We can also shade in four parts of six to get four-sixths, and shade in one part of six to get one-sixth. And the fraction with the greater numerator is greater. They have the same denominator, so the fraction with the greater numerator, this one, is the greater fraction. Four-sixths is greater than one-sixths. We can also compare fractions by using a common numerator. When two fractions have the same numerator, they represent the same amount of parts. This is 2 thirds, so there's two parts that are shaded. This is 2 fourths, there's two parts that are shaded. But if the numerators are the same, and they have different denominators, this has a 3, this has a 4, the size of the parts are different. This is 2 of 3 parts, this is two of four parts. This has bigger parts because there's only three of them. This has smaller parts because now there's four of them. We can compare the size of their parts. When the numerators are the same, the fraction with the lower denominator represents the greater fraction. Here we have two one-third parts, that's two-thirds. They're bigger parts. We have two one-fourth parts, that's two-fourths, they're smaller parts. This is the lower denominator, two-thirds is greater than two-fourths. We learned in video 6.6, .6, which is linked in the description, that we can compare fractions by using a zero, half, or one as benchmarks. This means we can compare fractions by using the benchmarks, common denominators or common numerators. We can compare 2 sixths and 7 tenths using a benchmark of a half. We know half of 6 is a 3, so 3 sixths would be half. This is only 2 sixths, so 2 sixths is less than 1 half. It's less than 3 sixths. We know half of 10 is 5, so 5 tenths would be a half. And that's 7 tenths, that's more than 5. So 7 tenths is greater than half. So we know 2 sixths is less than 7 tenths. And we can compare these same fractions using common denominators. We see a denominator 6, a denominator 10. So we write the multiples of 6 and 10. We can see they meet at 30. We ask ourselves, 6 times some number is equal to 30. That's 6 times 5. We need to multiply the numerator by the same number, or it'll get jealous. 
Now we have two times five. Our new numerator is a 10. We do the same thing for 7 tenths. 10 times some number is equal to 30. Well, that would be a 3. We need to multiply the numerator times 3, which is 21. Now we're comparing 10 thirtieths to 21 thirtieths. We can see that 10 thirtieths is less than 21 thirtieths. 10 is less than 21. That means 2 sixths is less than 7 tenths. We were able to compare the same fractions using either benchmarks or common denominators. When we have common numerators, the numerators are the same. The fraction with the lower denominator is the greater fraction because it has larger sized parts. They both have 3 for a numerator. We look at the denominator, 8 is less than 10. That must have larger parts, so that's the greater fraction. 3 eighths is greater than 3 tenths. Here we have 5 sevenths and 5 sixths. They have the same numerator. They have a common numerator of 5. We look to the denominator, and the denominator with the lower number, this 6 is lower than 7. That means these parts are larger. They're bigger than these parts. That means 5 sevenths is less than than 5 6. It's got smaller parts and it has 5 of them. This has larger parts and it's got 5 of them. So we have 5 larger parts. That means that's the greater fraction. In video 6.3, which is linked in the description, we learned to write fractions in their simplest form. We can compare fractions by writing them in their simplest form. We divide the numerator and denominator by a common factor. We have 6 tenths and 2 fifths. We can write the 6 tenths in simplest form. 6 and 10 have a 2 as a common factor. We do 6 divided by 2, which is 3, and 10 divided by 2, which is 5. Now 6 tenths is in its simplest form. We make sure we divide the numerator and denominator by the same factor so they don't get jealous of each other. Now we're comparing 3 fifths and 2 fifths. They have the same denominator, so whichever has the greater numerator is the greater fraction. 6 tenths is greater than 2 fifths. In this problem, only one fraction had to be written in simplest form. We might have a problem where they both can be written in simplest form. Here we're comparing 2 eighths and 6 tenths. We can write them in simplest form. For 6 tenths, we can divide both the numerator and denominator by a 2 and get a 3 fifths. We can even write 2 eighths in simplest form by dividing by the common factor 2 for 2 and 8. 2 divided by 2 is 1, and 8 divided by 2 is 4. Now we would need to compare 1 fourth and 3 fifths. So sometimes it's faster to just use benchmarks and mental math, because after writing these fractions into their simplest form, we'll still need to use benchmarks or common denominators. We know half of 8 is a 4, so 4 eighths would be a half. Well, this is only 2 eighths, so 2 eighths is less than a half. We know that 5 is half of 10, so 5 tenths would be a half. And this is 6 tenths. That's more than 5 tenths, so 6 tenths is greater than half. This one's less than half. This one's greater than half. We know this, 2 eighths, is less than 6 tenths. It was just faster to use benchmarks than to have to put them into their simplest form. And we could also use common denominators, but it's still quicker to use that benchmark of half. We need to choose all the methods we can use to compare these fractions. We have one-fifth and one-ninth. Could we use simplest form? Well, look at the numerators. They're, they both have a 1, so these are unit fractions. They can't be simplified anymore, so we can't use simplest form. 
Could we use a benchmark of a half? Well, because it's one-fifth and one-ninth, neither one of them is close to half. Could we use a common denominator? Could we give five and nine a common denominator? And then see which one is greater or less? Yeah, we could use a common denominator. We could list their multiples for 5 and 9. They can meet at 45, and we would end up comparing 9 45ths to 5 45ths. They have the same denominator, so 9 45ths would be greater. They both have the same numerator, a 1. So could we use a common numerator and think, well, they have the same numerator, so we can look at the denominators and see which one is the lower number. That would be the greater fraction. And 5 is lower than 9. That means 1 fifth is greater than 1 ninth. And look, the equivalent fraction, 9 40 fifths for 1 fifth, is greater. So we could use a common numerator. For 2 eighths and 1 fourth, could we use simplest form? This is already in simplest form because it has a 1 as a numerator, so it's a unit fraction. 2 eighths can be written in simplest form. When we divide the numerator and denominator by a common factor 2, we get 1 fourth as an equivalent fraction. That means we have 1 fourth and 1 fourth. So yes, we could use simplest form because it would show us they are equal to each other. Could we use a benchmark? Do we have a fraction that is close to a half or more than half? No, they're both less than half, so using a benchmark probably would not be a good idea. Could we use a common denominator? Could we change them to have a common denominator? Because 8 is a multiple of 4, they can both meet at 8. We can multiply the numerator and denominator by a 2 and get 2 eighths. And we would have 2 eighths and 2 eighths. So yes, we could use a common denominator. And this fraction has a 2 for a numerator, and this one has a 1 for a numerator. So they don't have a common numerator. So... We could use a common numerator if we put it into simplest form first and then use the common numerator, but it would be easier to just put it in simplest form and use common or use common denominator. Once we put it in simplest form, they're going to be equal to each other anyway, so there wouldn't be any reason to use a common numerator. So for these two fractions, the methods we could use would be simplest form and common denominator. Chris and Lisa each ordered a pizza. Chris cut his pizza into eight slices and ate five slices. Lisa cut her pizza into six slices and ate three slices. Use fractions to compare the amounts to find who ate more. Chris has eight slices and he ate five of them. That's five eighths. Lisa cut hers into six slices and ate three of them. That's three sixths. We can take away five slices from this pizza to see how much Chris ate. We take away one, two, three, four, five. That's all he has left. Lisa ate three slices. We can take away one, take away two, and three, so who ate more pizza? Well, Chris has fewer pieces left, so he must have eaten more. Five eighths is greater than three six. We could even use a benchmark. Three six is half, we can see she ate half, and five eighths, four eighths would be half, five eighths is more than half, he ate more than half of his pizza. So he ate more. Five eighths is greater than three six. Chris ate more pizza. We can use a benchmark or models to help us solve a problem like this. Mrs. Kim baked an apple pie. She used half teaspoon of cinnamon, 
a fourth teaspoon of nutmeg and an eighth of a teaspoon of ginger. Which measure is greatest and which is least? Each of the fractions have a common numerator one. We can look at their denominators to find the greatest or least. The lowest denominator will be the greatest fraction. They all have common numerators. They all have a one. We look at the lowest number denominator to be the greatest fraction. We have a two, a four, and an eight. The lowest one is the two. So half a teaspoon of cinnamon, that's the greatest fraction. So which fraction would be the least? If the lowest number is the greatest fraction, it kind of makes sense that the greatest denominator would be the least fraction. We have an eight, so one eighth teaspoon of ginger is the least measure. When fractions have a common numerator, we can look at their denominators to find which one is less or greater. The lower the denominator, the greater the part, the larger the parts. So it's a larger fraction. In our next lesson, 6.8, we're going to compare and order fractions. So we can put a few fractions in order from least to greatest. I hope you have a wonderful day, and I hope I'll see you there. Bye.